And it's also one of the most elegantly designed games I've played in a long time. Well, I think it's time for you to add to that list. When watching Mark Brown's video about Ojiro Fumoto's design of Downwell, particularly the dual purpose nature of each of its mechanics, something stuck out to me. There is incredible elegance to be found in games designed around a single mechanic. The simplicity of design that Mark Brown touches on in this video really embodies to me a lot of the beautiful aspects of what game design can do when limited. A lot of his idea can be traced back to a single Shigeru Miyamoto quote. A good idea is something that does not solve just one single problem, but rather can solve multiple problems at once. And this core concept from Miyamoto really encapsulates to me a lot of the beauty of what Nintendo does with its game design, and how they can have a game like Mario Odyssey where so much of it is just centered around Cappy, or a water jetpack, or spherical platforming, and even to becoming a painting on a wall and looking like some nice interior decoration. For this reason, that's why I really fell in love with Nitrum's Bomb Chicken. In this game, everything is centered around just one singular ability, the bomb lay. This one action controls how the players do everything in Bomb Chicken, from killing enemies to revealing paths. I mean, the bombs even serve as a substitute for a jump, since, well, this fat chicken isn't making it that far off the ground himself. I think the centrality of this mechanic is really showcased in the control scheme. On your controller, save for the joysticks and d-pad, every single button lays a bomb in exactly the same way. Because of this, players are able to play the entire game through just using only one Joy-Con, and still experience the same amount of depth that I would get from playing with two. And I think one of the beautiful things about the simplicity of the controls is that Nitrum's asking players to think about the bomb placement and their conditions just as much as they're worrying about the chicken's well-being. Because of this, it can sometimes feel like you're controlling two different characters on the screen, your bombs and your chicken, which I guess is why the game's called Chicken Bomb. Yeah, that looks good, print it! A lot of this multi-purpose design from Nitrum actually spills over to the enemies as well. Besides simply just killing the player, they can also detonate bombs, serve as an extra platforming boost, and even trigger switches that can lock doors or open up certain walls. Now, despite only having one core mechanic and one main obstacle in the game, Nitro was still able to offer intense depth on both sides of the equation just because of how refined and how fully fleshed out their design is. In one case, you could just lay the bombs and wait for them to be detonated after a certain time window. You can use a stack tower of bombs that can be used to evade to platform, or detonate at higher elevations. Sometimes even you have to use some combination of the three. Bombs can be pushed, they can be manipulated around the screen. This addition allows for cool mechanics that result in instant detonations and cool chain events that can happen just because of a simple mechanic. If I were to argue for the primary benefit of this simplicity in their design, I would have to say is that mechanics can easily chain and link together without feeling daunting or complex. Everything the player can do or have done to them in this game simply feels like the logical association of two obviously intertwined twined bits. It doesn't seem confusing to the player that bombs can be thrust towards enemies and instantly detonate just because you've already learned that movement can interact with bombs and bombs can be instantly detonated against enemies. And putting all of these elements together ultimately feels elegant in its solution, without making the game feel too cluttered or asking the player to remember too many different combinations of control inputs or how different things interact. It's not an uncommon situation in this game to be trying to blow up a destructible wall nearby, but then some bat flies over that requires you to start evading by stacking up, but overall this starts a chain reaction of bomb tower explosions that could kill you, and you start to react by placing more bombs and flailing about with your movement, and overall this leads to crazier and more hectic risks in the gameplay. Now I'd be remiss not to mention that this is a theme throughout Nitrum's holistic design, in large part because of the company's mobile game roots. For starters, mobile is inherently a platform where touch controls limit the number of actions a player can feasibly do. I mean, unless you put some goofy virtual joystick that takes up half the screen, you're really limited on a player's input. And because of this limitation, Nitrum's games are often centered around one main interaction the player can perform with the world. Be it jumping in leap day or contracting the walls in the frankly wacky stretch dungeon, their design focuses largely around one good idea that can be fully used and explored upon, without asking the player to remember too many complex interactions or button inputs. This pattern that Nitrum exemplifies isn't just limited to the games that they naturally develop either. Games published by the studio still exemplify a lot of these core mechanics which I think shows just how central this one purpose is to all the people over at Nitro. I mean, you don't earn the title of Nintendo of the App Store if you're not mirroring the examples of the greats. Interestingly enough, this pattern doesn't just exist to Nitro. Downwell was made with mobile in mind, so Fumoto only wanted three buttons, left, right, and jump. 
And it seems like born out of this similar platform, they both found ways to refine and hone in on specific mechanics so it wouldn't clutter the gameplay for the mobile player. This theme of their design likely leads to so much of the multi-purpose design we see in Bomb Chicken, especially since the fact that it initially started development for iOS and Android. If I could point out just one more thing about how great limitations are in game design, it would have to be about Bomb Chicken's status as a puzzle platformer game. Now, as anyone will tell you, or more specifically Mark Brown, here's a clip. Every puzzle game starts with its mechanics, a set of ironclad rules that govern how the game works. These rules, and perhaps more importantly, these limitations, are used to create puzzles. And since so many of the puzzles in this game are built around the limitations that the character has innately, the player never experiences a problem of, oh, I forgot I had that ability, or that doesn't seem like it makes sense, because everything in the game design circles back to this core idea and interaction in the game. So in the end, Bomb Chicken serves as a beautiful example for how games can do so much with so little, as long as every element is absolutely juiced to its full potential. I mean, come on. When you have an idea as cool as bomb chicken eggs, why even bother adding another one in? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out this video. I had a lot of fun working on it, and even more fun playing Bomb Chicken, so I would absolutely go recommend that on your Switch. I also have to give full props to Mark Brown's video about Downwell's dual-purpose design because that served as a huge inspiration for this video, and he puts it so beautifully. Absolutely go check out that video. It's fantastic, I love him. Just go check out Mark Brown, I'll put all of his annotations in the side screen. Go check him out right now. And with that, if you wanna see any of my other videos, then you can click right here to see another analysis about Mario 3D World's poor co-op. And if you have any other thoughts about this topic, then make sure to let me know in the comments below. But with that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you all next time. You have a good one, all right?